Hey everyone, I'm Stacey Rohde and welcome to our five day sugar detox and sit up challenge. I am so excited that you're here and I know I can speak on behalf of all of us coaches that have invited you to this group to learn and to change and to do something new with us because uh, I've never actually done something like this so I'm really excited about it and thank you for stepping out of your comfort zone and reaching out and um, yeah, just being open to learning something new with us as we go. As Team Beachbody coaches, we love, love sharing things that we learn as we all go on our journey. I looked, I, we like to look at health as, um, as a journey, not a destination, right? Like our bodies are always changing, we're aging, we have children, you know, we're pregnant, whatever your season is that you're in, um, there's always something new that you can learn about your body. And I think, for all of us, we can say that we understand health is something that keeps our bodies, um, keeps the vitality in our lives, keeps our moods balanced, uh, keeps away depression and anxiety. I mean, when we're really fueling our bodies with proper foods and getting that workout in that we just need sometimes to relieve the stress of our lives, we feel so much better. I know I've worked with women for a really long time. I am a makeup artist an esthetician turned health coach, health and lifestyle coach. And so uh, working in cosmetics and being around women and just, you know, we've got so many things going on and uh, we just want to feel good, really. We just want to feel confident in our own skin and we want to feel in control and not just eating, you know, off of our kids' plates all day long or eating on the run all the time if you're busy with your career, whatever that looks like for you. Um, I just know that... This will help us get some focus, and I'm gonna to be totally all in with you guys this whole week. Um, I'm going to be having a panic attack, I'm sure, by Wednesday night without any sugar, um, but it's gonna be it's gonna be good. So, um, I love I kind of going back to my history. I'm totally obsessed with helping women feel more confident and more comfortable in their own skin, and that's the joy of me, you know, doing this journey with all of you guys and with the other coaches on our team. So again, welcome. And I want to just kind of cover a couple things that I thought we'll have posts every day throughout the group. Um, but there's a couple things that I wanted to talk to you guys about before we start, because a lot of the health journey, uh, because we run monthly fitness challenges uh, and nutritional challenges as well on our team. So a lot of it begins with mindset. And if you can get your mind right, and if you can, you know, talk to your spouse, talk to your close friends, the people that are around you, your coworkers, let them know what you're up to so that they know that you're not just being extreme this week, that you're actually just really trying to give your body a rest from processing so many sugars and junks and different things that we like to throw in it when we're busy and not thinking and falling into old habits, right? So make sure that you get the support of those people closest to you. And then also, I want everyone to grab, if you've done a Beachbody program with us before, great. You've already got like that measuring tape that's soft, you know, the one that's in like a sewing kit or something. So for those of you that have never done a challenge with us, go hunt down a measuring tape of some sort. I mean, obviously a hard ruler is not going to work, but I want you guys to measure your waist. So right at the belly button, I want you to measure your thigh. So maybe halfway, midway on the thigh and then measure your arm. And that way, I mean, the arm probably isn't gonna change in five days. Okay, let's measure the hips. So like the, the farthest point of your bum. So if you're standing sideways in the mirror, put the measuring tape on the part of your bum on your JLo booty that sticks out and measure there. Because when the liver is overtaxed, we tend to hold weight on our thighs, our stomach, and our butts. Um, more because those are just the areas that um, research shows that it holds bloat. So measure that, write it down because I'll be curious and take your weight if you want to. We don't like to focus on the scale that much. We really like to focus on non-scale victories um, like photos. You could take a photo and just see, you know, like sometimes the love handles go down. It's surprising what can happen in a short amount of time. 
So yeah, just chart your measurements and your stats and then do them on the last day. And it's not only going to keep you more accountable to have taken that photo and done those measurements, it's also going to give you something fun to look at. Now, if you don't lose anything, no big deal. Our bodies do what they want to do in their own time. That's something that we cannot control, something that we don't want to get down about. But it is, um, you know, anything that you measure can be improved upon. So anything that you are taking measurements of, you can always, whatever you're looking to do, whatever your goal is, um, a lot of it's in the unseen, especially with nutrition, because we want our hearts to be healthy. We want our GI tract to be healthy. We want our liver to not be processing, you know, too much stuff and over being overworked and keeping that weight on because the liver is what helps us burn fat as well. So that being said, I'm going to try not to talk too long, but a couple things. Um, being an esthetician, I do know that sugar is eating that refined sugar will break down the DNA in your skin a little bit, like the collagen and elastin. So um, I, when I think about sugar, I think about that. I'm like, I don't want to age. I don't want a premature age with the sugar. You know, I'm not, I know that there's other external factors that do it. Sugar is more of an internal factor that can age your skin. So just kind of a fun little tidbit for you. Um, there's a lot of hidden sugars in like prepackaged bars and snacks and chips and different crackers. And so even if you think you're eating like a health bar from Costco, you know, whatever, make sure that when you're buying those on the go snack bars that you are reading the labels because you could have a paleo bar that's got 21 grams of sugar in the bar even though it's paleo but you could have another bar that only has you know six grams of sugar and when you see that difference you're really going to make that understanding of wow okay why does this pasta sauce have so much sugar in it let me find a different brand uh, you know why does this salsa have to have sugar in it that's odd let's find a different brand. So I want you guys to have that really keen sense of um, urgency with the labels because that's how you learn how to eat cleaner is by reading the labels and educating yourself on what you're putting in your body. And it's pretty simple. Eating whole foods is always the best way, but we have busy lives and we need that simple um, way to adjust what we're doing. And then also, you know, finding transitional foods has been huge for me on my journey. I'm someone who literally when people think of me, like if I were to die today, I shouldn't say that, knock on wood, they'd be like, oh, Stacy, yeah, she likes candy. Like that's how people know me. My friends threw a bridal shower and they couldn't think of a theme and so they chose a candy theme. So we had Oreos and gummy bears and red vines and oh my word, it's terrible. Um, it's kind of embarrassing, but it's true. I kind of eat candy like um, a five-year-old would like you know those little hamburger gummies those cute little packets of like pizza gummies that you find that you see yeah that's I buy that kind of stuff I used to buy that kind of stuff um, but kind of knowing that it wasn't that good for me knowing that I needed to break up with that type of food um, I used to be where I always had to have gummy bears in the house and now I'm proud to say I have journeyed on to different pastures of dark chocolate I do not uh, go down the gummy bear aisle. I sometimes I do, so once in a while, I'll grab a pack, but it would be every time I was at the store. So have hope and know that if you are fully addicted to sugar like I was, it does get better. And you can find a food that it still tastes as good to you and it still feels like a reward and a treat, but it's not something that's going to just be junk and not have any nutritional value to it. And there's lots of homemade fun treats you can make with honey and cocoa powder and you know, all in nuts and peanut butter and all sorts of stuff. So we just need to Google and find some good recipes, right? So if you find any, share them in the group. Um, but yeah, no, so I have graduated on to dark chocolate. So I just find something that I like. Um, I make sure that it's a good brand and I try to have it be, you know, 70 to 85% cocoa powder. And I always have dark chocolate in the house because I'm the type of person, I don't know if you're like me or not, but if you take something away from me, like for the next five days, I'll be a little bit on edge. I kind of go crazy. I love to live. I know us as team body, team beach body coaches, we kind of live by the 80, 20 rule. We like to have those daily habits that really get us to our goals, but still have that time where we can have quote unquote, a happy meal and not feel bad about it and not have like an entire cheat week. We'll just have some cheat treats and a cheat meal once in a while and we get right back on the wagon. So that's how we like to view life and how we rock it. 
Um, so yeah, find, you know, kind of go to the store and explore and find some traditional things, some transitional things for you that are going to work for you and your taste buds. And to be honest, um, like my little ad said, the less you eat that sugary candy, the less you're going to crave it. The more whole foods, the more veggies, the more fruits you eat, you will start craving those and your body's going to recognize it as fuel, as food, and your taste buds will change. You just have to cut out that really refined sugar for a little while to notice it, or at least cut way, way, way back. So I'd encourage you guys to keep maybe a journal over the next five days, um, just about what you're thinking, what you wanna change. Anytime I do a short cleanse or something that is going to teach me new habits, I do always take away one new habit with me that stays in my brain, that helps me continue on with my journey so that I can be better always. And it reminds me, you know, I don't fall back into those really hard, heavy, old, bad habits that I used to have. I fall back into a lesser evil. But at least we can know ourselves enough and tell ourselves that we're strong and that we are capable of doing anything. So on when Wednesday night comes and I'm aching for, you know, something really sweet, um, then I can know and I can tell myself that I'm stronger and that I have willpower. And I think you know, that mental game is a huge part of it. So guys, I think I'm going to stop talking and let you go on with your bad selves. Have a great, great, great week. Um, you've got, you know, you've got the meal plan and the grocery list in the files tab. If you cannot access that, let us know. We can help you uh, figure out how to find it on your phone. It's pretty simple. Um, but you know, sometimes the phone is tricky. And then, um, what else? I think that's it. If you have anything that you want to share with us, please share it. Know that you're in a safe place and know that we are all just trying to be better versions of ourselves. Okay, so peace out guys. I will see you on the flip side. Talk to you soon. Bye.